I play Samira, uh, a woman who comes to New York City uh, on a day trip when the invasion occurs. And everything about what she thought she would be doing changes. Uh, and along the way, trying to navigate this new world, she comes across a perfect stranger, Eric. I play Eric. My name's Joe. And he is a mysterious man, far away from everything that he knows, far away from home, pursuing a better life uh, in New York City until something goes terribly wrong. I was drawn into this movie first and foremost by John Krasinski. Uh, I spoke to him and he told me about uh, why he wants to tell another story in this uh, universe. Uh, and his point was that he only wanted to carry on telling stories in the A Quiet Place universe if he could find new ways in, uh, stories that would somehow expand the universe as well as expand what the horror and thriller genre can encompass. And I love that as a mandate for um, going back to this place. And so he passed the baton to Michael Sarnowski and I watched his film Pig. I was really taken by how he uh, tackles severe material with a tenderness. And when I read the script for A Quiet Place Day One, I felt that same sensibility come across in this world where it's a bigger scale, we're in New York, there's all the spectacle of an apocalyptic film, but at the heart of it is just navigating the the human relationship between these two strangers that are trying to overcome great odds. I was drawn to the central characters. I thought that they were so fully realized and very much well observed on the page. I think that something like this with a large scale spectacle film, apocalypse film, it could be quite easy to lose sight of the beating heart of any motion picture, which is the characters that occupy it. Mm -hmm. And I think that this film really preserves that. It preserves these two perfect strangers colliding, meeting each other and revealing certain things about themselves throughout the process of the film, as well as providing a lot of scares and entertainment and thrill. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought that that would be a really interesting exercise and an interesting kind of bank to try and rob, really. It was wonderful for, to work with and for Michael Cernoski. He leads a joyful set. He's very calm. I'm fascinated by how calm he remains even when things are chaotic around him. Uh, and he has this like magical child quality that is infectious, right? And movie making is such a privilege, right? It's, we get to play for a living and sometimes we can take ourselves too seriously. And what I find with Michael is that he doesn't fall for that. He's still very much enamored by uh, the movie making. He brings a freshness to it. Um, a sort of childlike wonder and the material is is intense and demanding but there's a joy with which he 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 does it and I, I, I loved working with him because of that. He's a wonderful man and a brilliant leader and a sensitive one as well. Mm -hmm. The con yeah the the content of the script the the themes that are explored are like pretty large questions it's about grief it's about dependency, it's about family, it's about uh, an unraveling of a society, what happens to human beings when all of the things that we're told are there to keep us safe disappear. Like mm -hmm. These are kind of large, large themes and big questions. And I think it was handled in a way that was very delicate and entertaining at the same time. And it takes a rare person to be able to uh, steer that ship. Mm -hmm. So it was lovely working with him. Uh, we had some wonderful other cast members, Jamon Honsu and Alex Wolf, um, to name but a few. But yeah, we had um, we had a really lovely gang on this, and it's uh, it's makes everything a lot easier when you've got some uh, some people like that involved. I was a huge fan of both of them. I've been a huge fan of Jamon since I was young. 
Uh, and he was so incredible in the second movie. I love Michael, and I loved doing Pig with Michael, and we become best friends. Um, Jamon and I are also best friends, um, as you can see. Um, and, uh, and we just had a great time, and I think this movie is really cool because it's, it's, it's huge in its scale, and uh, it's really terrifying, it's really thrilling, it's action-packed, and yet I feel that the emotions are matched with the, side, uh, the size of the movie. I feel that the emotions are really big and really intense, and you don't really get that very often. And I'm kind of excited that um, young people going to see this movie are going to have something that is a big blockbuster, but is also about um, the human, condition. human condition and what, and what people go through when, they, when strangers right. have to come together. We can all expect a big screen action, right? Uh, that is guaranteed. We also have a uh, beautifully character-driven uh, narrative uh, uh, that uh, Michael was able to bring to life. Yeah, it was amazing to, uh, to be part of this, uh, this interpretation. John Krasinski came to me and he had seen a film I did called Pig and he said, what would it look like if you brought some of that pig touch to the Quiet Place universe? Uh, and he gave me a lot of space and time to figure out what my end to that story would be. Um, and I really came to this character of Sam that I became very interested in and excited about. Uh, and I pitched it to him, half expecting him to say, well, that's not really the direction we want to go. It's a little odd. But he was so supportive and said, heck yeah, let's do it. And he gave me a lot of freedom to really explore this story and explore this narrative and really make it my own, which was very generous of him. Uh, and yeah, I think, I think we've made a movie that feels very much its own and will be exciting and moving for people. I had seen both of the Quiet Place films in theaters when they came out and they are a really special movie going experience to watch with an audience. So I had a wonderful experience with both of those and I just loved how fundamental and essential those stories were, were where you got to follow intimate character dramas while also faced with this very primal and visceral challenge of these creatures that hunt by sound and if you make a sound you die and I liked sort of the simplicity of that that allowed you to explore really nuanced characters so I was very excited to work in that in that universe. John and Paramount were extremely gracious in giving me the space that I needed to make this movie. John really said hey make this movie your own and gave me a lot of support and advice on how to kind of take the reins on this and explore his universe in a way that felt all my own. Uh, and, and I really, I don't think I could have done it without that freedom and without finding something that I really cared about in these characters and, and then had the opportunity to explore. I think there's a lot of pressure and ideas of, of what we could see in a prequel and how much you could expand this universe because there's so many ways you could go with A Quiet Place. And for me, I just really had to focus on characters and finding a story that I was excited about and that I cared about uh, because you know you have to live with these characters for years and see a whole movie through their eyes um, and and I think finding the opportunity to really tell a unique story within this amazing universe was the thing that most excited me. Going from the original two Quiet Place movies to day one is going to feel like a big jump in scale. You're going from a, a, a rural environment to one of the loudest cities in the in the world and there's multiple creatures, so many people that are dealing with this situation, uh, and I think it's going to feel uh, like the next sort of level of, of how people are having to deal with these creatures and seeing how they initially had to, had to learn about this, yet at the same time I think it really honors the roots of the franchise in being character-driven dramas that are about unique people going through this situation and how they're dealing with it, and I think in Sam and Eric we've really found a story that feels all its own. I think with Quiet Place Day One, audiences can expect something that's exciting, that's tense, but also something that's moving and surprisingly emotional, filled with incredible performances and incredible set pieces that feel visceral and engrossing. Um, and they'll get to watch some characters that hopefully they'll really fall in love with, learn about each other, and discover this world together.